the labor movements and identity protest of the 18th and 19th century. The beginnings of American history lie in the reflection of the future. By the time the American Civil War was on the brink of eruption, the North and South were separated in many ways. The North, or Union, held values of industrialization and frowned upon the use of slavery. Thus, the South, or Confederate, was agriculture-based and centered upon the use of slavery. This connection is quite significant in American history. As industrialization took place, a burgeoning working class appeared, and the workers often faced harsh working conditions, long hours, low wages, and little job security. The abolitionist sentiment that prevailed in the North, coupled with the economy, presented an opportunity for America to make some serious changes. Organizing labor unions to solve issues that had bearing similarities to slavery, the talks of exploitation in the South started to have some serious interest, showing the intertwining between the two movements. Figures such as Frederick Douglass championed the abolition of slavery and the rights of workers. This gave the rise to the Republican Party emerging as a political force in the North. Following the Civil War, slavery was outlawed and the era of Reconstruction began. Solidarity amongst workers was stronger than it had ever been. It also laid out the groundwork for future labor reforms. The song being played now is a piece created by Julia Ward Howe in 1861 commemorating the themes of abolitionism, righteousness, and the eventual triumph of justice that the soldiers of the North paid their lives for. One can only begin to wonder where America would be today if not for the Union soldiers and their bravery. Let us die to make men free. Forging Solidarity, the Roots of the Labor Movement Throughout history, workers have always been fighting to improve working conditions and wages through various forms of organization. In America, mutual aid societies were commonly used, which would pool resources together to support each other in times of need. Early efforts such as these are what influenced the more known formalized labor unions in the United States. With the urbanization of the 19th century, workers began to come together in these labor unions and protest in the advocation of better wages, working conditions, shorter work weeks, and better job security. Examples include the National Trade Union, one of the earliest national labor federations in the United States, and the Knights of Labor, a late 19th century organization focused on uniting workers across different trades and industries. One of the main reasons the labor movement began was due to the wealth differences of the time. Being a huge source of tension and conflict, as often money has a huge influence on the behavior of law. As Thomas Jefferson once said, I hope we shall crush in its birth the aristocracy of our moneyed corporations which dare already to challenge our government to trial by strength and bid defiance to the laws of our country. The Civil War being a perfect example of this diplomacy. Key Figures Robert Owen, a British industrialist and social reformer, promoted workers' rights and often experimented with cooperative communities in the United States, inspiring early labor activists. Writings on class struggle and capitalism by famous authors like Karl Marx and Frederick Engels contribute a huge amount to normalizing criticism of these systems and developing the labor movement in the mid to late 18th century. And perhaps the most significant figure mentioned, Joe Hill, a Swedish-American labor activist, was a prominent figure in the American labor movement as a member of the IWW, or Industrial Workers of the World. He created songs such as The Preacher and the Slave. Go to hell, you will eat, you will eat by and by, in that glorious land and 
the sky way up high. Working. And there is power in a union. There is power, there is power in the band of working men when they stand. When they stand. Hill's songs capture the spirit and resistance amongst the workers of the time. Other works by him consist of cartoons. This one presenting a worker helping himself to some food off of a capitalist's plate. First Amendment of the United States Constitution discusses the freedom of speech. This was the exact reason that Joe Hill was executed by a row of gunmen. His final words are said as, Goodbye, Bill. I die like a true blue rebel. Don't waste any time mourning. Organize. Being caught up in a murder case that he had not committed, don't mourn, organize, goes down in the history books as one of the most influential quotes related to the American labor movement. The struggle for recognition strikes. Considered the first consequential union strike, the Homestead Steel Strike in Pennsylvania was a pivotal event in American labor history. Caused by Henry Clay Flick, who tried to cut wages and weaken the union's power, led to a violent confrontation between workers and detectives hired by the company. This resulted in a bloody battle. The union was severely weakened, underscoring the struggle and the efforts of the workers to fight for reasonable standards. Pullman Strike in 1893, George Pullman fired 75% of his employees and cut the wages of the ones rehired. Known for creating the sleeper car and revolutionizing the railroad industry, this ruined his reputation as a strike called for boycotting all trains carrying Pullmans, causing another big step of the labor strike to be taken, as workers who weren't involved took on the burden even though it didn't affect them. The Great Steel Strike during World War I, many industrial complexes, such as steel factories, made huge amounts of money through contracts with government-slash-military agencies. As a means to keep strikes off the table, alliances such as the War Labor Board joined together to improve labor conditions. This alliance did not last long after the war and caused many unions involved in the steel industry to come together and call a nationwide strike with 350,000 workers walking off the job in six different states. Police and company hired thugs beat up thousands of picketeers and black workers who were brought in as strike breakers. This is important because black individuals were normally excluded from the labor unions due to segregation and racial prejudice. The Triangle Shirtwaist Factory Strike The Shirtwaist Factory Fire in 1911 killed 146 young immigrant women. This caused a huge strike demanding better working conditions, safety measures, and workers' rights. The event drew national attention to the things being demanded and did margins to speed up the subsequent changes and labor reforms. Combined with equality issues that were presented with gender discrepancies and immigrant treatment, this serves as a hugely important strike. Unions advocating for equal pay, maternity leave, and other workplace protections for women have been a huge part of the labor movement, and without the active participation of women in labor organizing, these goals would have been significantly hindered. The song playing now is known as Bread and Roses, performed by Bobby McGee. As we come marching, marching, Days. The rising of the women means the rising of the race. No more the drudge and idler, tend that toil where one reposes. Named after a strike, a only a year after the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire, the slogan Bread and Roses was born, becoming the infamous title for demanding economic sustenance and dignity for all females in America. While not all demands were met, the resilience and solidarity of the strike only added to the importance of the collective action and ongoing struggle that is workers' rights. Memphis Sanitation Workers' Strike The year was 1986. 
Two black Memphis trash collectors were crushed to death by a malfunctioning truck compactor. Workers were frustrated by the fact that the company would not compensate their families. Seen as a discriminatory pattern, the workers went on strike marching throughout the city, wearing signs that read, I am a man, creating these infamous photos that represent the racial tension of the period. The strike being a backdrop of the assassination of one of, if not the most important civil rights speaker of all time, Martin Luther King, the silent march consisted of 40,000 people throughout the city of Memphis. It's important to understand that as Americans, the backbone and creation of this country was based upon the discrimination and exploitation of African American individuals. The song being played is a piece recorded in the Mississippi and Louisiana penitentiaries. Being my main influence in creating this documentary, the emotion that is poured into this recording cannot be measured. Years upon years of slavery and mistreatment tells us the exhaustion in their voices means more than I myself can comprehend. There is no physical way to repay the damage that the slave owners and the institution enacted on them. Identity and the Labor Unions Children played a tragic role in the labor movement, with industries such as textile, mining, and agriculture taking advantage of some of American history's worst conditions and wages. Many labor unions advocated and fought against the exploitation of child labor. Eventually, laws were set, but the period highlights the movement's commitment to protecting the most vulnerable members of society, ensuring the fact that all workers, regardless of character, should be treated equally with dignity and respect. Babies in the Mill was a song created by Dorsey Dixon, who as a child worked in the mills. They created the song to encapsulate the memory for future generations to take in and grasp. I used to be a factory hand when things were moving slow. When children worked in cotton mills each morning had to go. Suppression and Solidarity Since the beginning of the labor movement, agencies have popped up that specialize in breaking up slash busting unions. The Pinkertons are an example of one of the first agencies of union busting. In 1892, Homestead Strike had 300 Pinkertons and caused a shooting to break out between them and the strikers. The quote-unquote king of strike breakers, Jack Whitehead, was a man who walked away from his union to create a private workforce to burst unions. He became super rich and inspired many to do the same, such as James A. Farley and Pearl Berghoff. Commercialization of this caused a lot of indoctrination, as often people began to frown upon unionization for reasons such as the Red Scare, which is a hysteria related to the rise of communism in the North, and high-profile unions having corrupted leaders who care more for money than the conditions of the workers around themselves did not help. Modern Day Significance The beginnings of American history lie in the reflection of the future. Equal opportunities and the reduction of disparities are ongoing goals of the labor movement. The question is, when will the movement end? The hopeful answer is never. With issues such as the middle class moving further and further away from the upper class, companies taking advantage of international wage rules, and social changes affecting marginalized groups at an all-time high, one can only question where we would be without the labor movement. And to conclude, the labor movement of the 18th and 19th centuries laid the foundation for a more just and equitable society, addressing issues of economic exploitation, racial injustice, and gender discrimination. From the abolitionist sentiment of the North to a union that was formed today, the legacy of the labor movement lives on, as we continue to strive for equal opportunities and the reduction of disparities in the workplace and beyond. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. But the union makes us strong. Solidarity forever.